In December 2019, explorer Fian Paul led a team of athletes on an extraordinary expedition to row from South America to the icy continent of Antarctica. To accomplish this, they had to travel 600 miles across one of the most treacherous bodies of water in the world, the Drake Passage. Paul described the whole environment as extremely cold and harsh. The short waves that struck them in quick succession hit them like walls. It's no secret that deadly storms blow through this ferocious spot where the Pacific, Atlantic, and Southern Oceans meet. These storms are one of the major reasons why the now famous Panama Canal was built. The construction of the Panama Canal is widely associated with the fact that it reduced travel time around South America by a significant amount. But that is not the only reason why it was built. Sailors around the world have actively tried to avoid going through the Drake Passage for thousands of years. But why is it that this relatively small stretch of water is so dangerous? This is a story of a sea where navigating proves nearly impossible. This is a story of why ships don't pass under South America. This is Geomore. Drake Passage is located between Cape Horn, Chile and Antarctica, covering a distance of 620 miles. This passage is the meeting point of the Pacific, Atlantic, as well as the Southern Oceans. Now, the question arises, why would anyone venture into these waters despite its dangers? Well, the answer is a bit complicated. The Drake Passage serves as an important route despite its dangers. It is a gateway for ships traveling between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, providing a direct connection for those navigating around the southern tip of South America. The strait's significance is highly increased by its role as a point of convergence for the world's two largest bodies of water. In terms of its depth, the average depth of the Drake Passage is 3,400 meters or 11,150 feet. However, at its extreme southern and northern ends, depths can go up to 4,800 meters or 15,700 feet. This geographic layout makes the Drake Passage a challenging yet unavoidable passage. Of course, there's also the Strait of Magellan between the mainland of Chile to the north and Tierra del Fuego to the south, but it's 350 miles long and varies in width from 2 to 20 miles. The narrow width and rocky cliffs of the strait can make navigation difficult, especially in poor visibility conditions. This makes the Drake Passage a logical route to take. Now, take a look at this map. This was our knowledge of the world in the 15th century. This entire region was terrorized by a pirate named Francis Drake. At that time, the British and Spanish empires were competing for global dominance. Francis was a ferocious pirate who had the direct support of the British Empire. He used that support to assault African cities around the coastline and take them as slaves to Britain. The British were very happy with Francis and decided to send him over to South America to break the dominance of the Spanish Empire. The plan was for Francis to conquer the cities and villages on the east coast of South America, enter the Strait of Magellan, and then attack the villages on the west coast of South America and bring them under British control. He was ordered to wipe out any opposition, whether it was the natives or the Spanish. And of course, nothing stood in Drake's way from looting as much gold and silver as he wanted. And he was well known for this desire. Francis Drake set sail from England in December of 1577 with five small ships, manned by about 200 men. By the next spring, he arrived at the Argentinian coast. Soon after landing, he hanged a group of his own officers on charges of treason and witchcraft. He then unloaded all the cargo from two ships, loading them onto the other three, and set off again through the Strait of Magellan. The journey took 16 days, and by sheer luck, he safely got out of the Magellan Strait. But then, everything went wrong. A storm of gale-force winds seized the expedition of ships, separating all three of them. One of the ships presumed Francis Drake to be dead and returned to England, whereas the second ship was lost altogether, probably in the Drake Passage itself. Luckily, Drake's ship was unharmed, but after the incident, he knew there was something different about this part of the sea. Though the passage is named after him, he never himself went about crossing it. 
At that time, no one knew what lay beyond that point, because no world map had been created like today. Drake turned his ship and headed for the west coast of South America, and then ultimately stopped at San Francisco after looting and plundering the west coast. He could not return to Britain because he was afraid that if he accidentally got caught in this area again, then he might not survive. Drake also told his close associates that he thought there was probably another world or an island beyond the sea where no one had ever been before. Drake's suspicions were true, but it was not an island, but the continent of Antarctica. For thousands of years, humans believed that there must be a continent here but no one had ever seen it through their own eyes. In the 17th century, explorer Captain Cook set out in search of this southern continent. He crossed the entire Atlantic Ocean and entered the Southern Oceans, but he never got to see Antarctica, as his ship was caught in the treacherous storms of the Drake Passage. He barely escaped with his life and never went back to this part of the sea again. Now, we should mention that Captain Cook was the greatest explorer of his time and that he was the one who explored the island country of New Zealand. In his journal, he mentioned that the risk of discovering this southern continent was so great that hardly any human would come as far as I have come. The question is, what makes the Drake Passage so unique and unpredictable? that even Captain Cook didn't want to venture inside. What is it about this meeting point of oceans that makes it so dangerous for mariners, explorers, and scientists? The simple fact is that the water from three different water bodies meets in the Drake Passage. It is the convergence point of the colder, northern-flowing Antarctic waters and the warmer, southern-flowing waters of the Atlantic and Pacific. An enormous amount of water flows through the Drake Passage, which is about 125 to 200 million cubic yards per second, or 600 times that of the Amazon River. To put this into perspective, the Amazon River is the most powerful flowing river in the world. The waters in the Drake Passage flow through a very large current called the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, or ACC. It mostly flows east to northeast, with a small portion branching into the South Atlantic called the Falklands Current. Because of the tremendous flow, the waves can reach up to 60 to 80 feet, and the convergence of warm and cold waters causes several cyclones in this region. Moreover, because of the water from Antarctica, the temperature can fall below minus 5 degrees Celsius. The winds in this region are always strong and predominantly western. This location is also one of the most distant on the globe, and today, the Drake Passage is pretty much the only way to reach Antarctica by boat. There are no nearby land masses to seek for shelter or people to be found who might assist you. An emergency in the Drake Passage must necessarily be dealt with alone. But it is human nature to want to explore the very thing that we are warned against. And that is exactly what happened in the 20th century. There was a surge in exploration and discovery. All of the explorers' attention was now focused on Antarctica. In 1914, the renowned British explorer Ernest Shackleton set out to explore Antarctica. After crossing the Atlantic Ocean, he reached the Drake Passage, where the seas smashed his ship into the ice glaciers, destroying it altogether. Ernest landed some of his colleagues on the ice and took five others in a tiny lifeboat to search for a nearby island for assistance. After one month, he arrived at South Georgia Island, but what he encountered in that one month was nothing more than horrific. He said this is the worst and the most dangerous part of our world's oceans, and my reaching this island is nothing short of a miracle. Ernest also claimed that Antarctica is the last greatest journey left to man. Over the next three months, many attempts were made to rescue Ernest's remaining crew members, and miraculously, no one died throughout the mission. Similarly, in April of 2012, a Brazilian businessman named Joel Lara was going through the Drake Passage with four people on his luxury cruise ship to produce a documentary when a storm hit and a 100-foot wave lifted the ship and tossed it towards Antarctica. By a miracle, the ship's radio was still operational and they quickly issued a rescue request to Chile. But even after that, the weather was so terrible that the Chilean rescue team took four days to reach them. But finally, with a lot of difficulty, all of them were rescued. In the last 10 years, there have been many such incidents here, 
Although, with the advancements of modern ships, life-threatening accidents have been less frequent. Despite the continuous warnings, the explorers of the 19th century, in fact, inspired an entire generation of explorers, scientists, hunters, and daredevils to explore the beautiful continent of Antarctica. There's astonishing biodiversity in the Arctic seas, including the massive abundance of whale and sea populations in the area. This naturally attracts tourists and explorers to visit this part of the world. And the curiosity of exploring the continent of Antarctica has been in place for almost two centuries now. It was in 1821 that the seal hunter John Davies, who'd started out from Connecticut, was driven off course by a violent storm and became arguably the first man by accident to land in Antarctica. At the start of the 20th century, suddenly everyone wanted to be the first person to reach the South Pole. In 1902, a British explorer, Robert Falcon Scott, brought a team to within 460 miles, or 740 kilometers, of the South Pole. Later, in 1910, Robert Falcon Scott tried again in the now infamous Terra Nova expedition to accomplish the impossible to reach the farthest point of the South Pole. Unfortunately, he attempted it at the same time as the Norwegian Roald Amundsen and his team. Roald Amundsen was the first to reach the South Pole on December 14, 1911. Just a month later, Scott and five members of his team also arrived, but were greeted by the defeating sight of a Norwegian flag. But the real defeat was still to come. The weather took a turn for the worse, on Scott's return to their ship, their food ran out, and storms and accidents impeded their movements and slowly withered them down. None of the five members who attempted to go to the South Pole returned from the trip. And though the expedition was a failure, the crew still managed to succeed in bringing back over 200 fossils of plants and animals that were entirely new to science, further increasing interest and awareness in the region's thriving biodiversity. The risk of exploring the southern continent has always been great, but the rewards are greater still. Fian Paul still remembers the penguins, dolphins, and whales that he and his team saw when they finally reached Charles Point on the Antarctic Peninsula. They had made it after 13 days of dueling with one of the wildest places on Earth. The fact that with today's advanced machines, sailors still hesitate to enter the Drake Passage, which demonstrates how helpless we are in the face of nature, as we were thousands of years before. The incidents that most people describe as life-threatening have merely become a blood-pumping sport for others. There are people out there who want to enter this part of the ocean only to feel the thrill of death through their eyes. To all those people, we want to say good luck. And that concludes our video on why ships don't pass under South America. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more fascinating content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Until next time.